All right, folks, today we are going to be talking about something that is a lot more, uh, you know, usual material for this channel, um, and that is going to be the cruise control transducers that GM used on a lot of their vehicles, I think all of their vehicles, that came with cruise control. Um, 1971 or 2 through uh, probably around 1992, so throughout the Malays era, they use these cruise control transducers here. Um, and even though they were used on almost every single vehicle that had cruise, or I should say almost every single vehicle, period, any vehicle that had cruise, um, there is no information about these online or in any of the books, really, that you can find. If you can find an old enough book that talks about the cruise control, I know for Fords, they have separate cruise control manuals for their systems. Um, but... In my books that I have for this car, there is no chapter even about this. There's just some diagnostics, which I have done to confirm that this thing is, in fact, uh, something inside of it is faulty. Um, so today in this video, I'm going to talk about the basic functions of this thing. My camera is being rather glitchy. This whole uh, camera has been glitchy all week. Um, so hopefully the video turns out smoother for you than it is uh, looking for me on the lens right now. <laughs> But uh, this thing here, um, as I said before, there is hardly any information about these out there. Um, I took it off the car. You can look at my last transmission video that I made. I did a little spiel about all the lines and everything going to this. And I'll show you once I put it back on as well where the lines go. This is probably going to be a two-part video. It's going to be this part, which is going to be taking it apart and explaining it. And part two, which is going to be putting it back together. Um, and reinstalling it on the car, um, but uh, basically there is one video out there on YouTube um, in which I'll, I will link either the video link or the uh, channel link in the description um, on who it is that uh, did it, but he very adequately, very well explained uh, how this thing functions and what it does and, and how to rebuild them and all that stuff um, a lot better than I probably will, so I recommend if you really want to know how it works, you go watch them. Um, but if you're already on this video and you want to know the basics, then congratulations, you've just found it. So this deal has, let's start with, with the basics here. It has these two holes here. And this hole right here is where the speedometer cable from the transmission comes in. And this hole right here is where the speedometer cable that goes to the speedometer comes out. Inside of this housing here, there are two gears that mesh with each other, and it transfers the motion from the speedometer uh, gear on the transmission to the speedometer uh, cable uh, for your dash. Um, and the reason that it's not just a straight cable like it would have been in the 60s, 50s, and 40s um, is because cruise control has to know how fast your vehicle is moving. So there's some electrical uh, components inside here that will uh, monitor that. So when you take it off, after you you know note where all the lines are and everything, you're gonna want to take a couple more things off here. So number one is these vacuum lines here. You want to note especially which one of these holes. See, one of them is higher than the other one. Which hose goes to where? Because these are refeed lines or recycle lines, I should say. The recycles that this one actually pumps vacuum in here. Um, and this one just recirculates it. Uh, but you want to uh, make sure you note where those are at and then take them off. Mine are pretty crusty, so I'm going to use a screwdriver to take them off. Hopefully I can salvage them without breaking them. But uh, if you're experiencing cruise control issues, I suggest checking all these vacuum lines to make sure that none of them are cracked or broken. Um, these ones look good. They're just crusty. Um, so I don't think I'm going to replace them because it's just a hassle. But... Uh, Maybe I will, I don't know. But that's the first thing you want to check for when you're taking these off. The second thing you're going to want to take off is this here electrical connector right here. This is the motor. This is where you resume. Uh, standard cruise control uh, transducers don't have these. This is a resume solenoid. There's an input and an output. Um, 
and this is where the extra vacuum line comes in. It's going to push vacuum into here, and once I have it cracked open, I'll show you more about how that works. But it's going to push vacuum into here that controls the uh, drum inside of there that uh, allows your cruise to advance or uh, retard um, in speed. So that's what this is. And in order to get this case apart, you're going to want to take that off. You don't have to, but it's going to be a pain in the butt if you don't. So we're going to take this off held on by two bolts right there and there and you're going to take all the hoses off this one's going to be difficult there is a, a fitting on that you can probably take the vacuum line off but this one looks like it's probably going to be better to take the fitting but we'll see what happens these bolts all the bolts on this transducer itself are including these two bolts holding the case together these two bolts holding this uh, switch on there which you don't have to take this off by the way that stays um, and these two bolts holding the, the resume actuator uh, motor on there and they're all the same size they're all going to be let's see what size is this one fourth socket so I'm going to take that stuff off and I'll be right back alright so what we have here is the transducer without any lines on it or the uh, resume servo or uh, resume motor sorry um, actuator this is what it'll look like if you buy one on eBay. You can't buy these new anymore, so you're either going to buy one on eBay or you're going to pay to get rebuilt somewhere. There is somebody north of here um, that rebuilds them, but I emailed them and they did not respond, so I guess I won't be getting that done, which is the reason I'm making this video, um, because when I YouTube did it, it didn't look all that difficult. Getting these lines off wasn't actually that hard. I probably didn't even need a screwdriver. They just kind of popped off, as well as this one right here. Oops. I thought that... Uh, you, I was going to have to take that fitting out, but it just kind of popped off. That one I did have to use a screwdriver, though. Um, this little motor here is non-serviceable. It's sealed. Uh, if you, you know, you, you can replace this. This you can buy, I believe. Um, it's a cruise control re uh, resume actuator or cruise control motor. I don't know what the actual part name or number for it is, but you can still buy it because I saw them online when I was looking for this. Um, but that's a separate uh, deal that you can you can test that, and I, I will uh, definitely do that. I don't know how, so it's not going to be mentioned here. But another thing I wanted to mention before I take this shell apart here is uh, what this means right here, this serial number, um, RR. I'm not exactly sure what these mean. I know it's a code of some sort, and you can probably find out if you talk to some old duffer that knows about this thing. But uh, some of them you can see is TG, I've seen RE, I've seen RS, I've seen LS, I've seen, you know, a ton of different number and letter codes, I've seen DG, I've seen DD, you know, it just, it seems to be completely random, but it is important for whatever reason. This right here is a serial number, and this right there is a part number. Um, see this here, it says, replace with resume cruise transducer and valve assembly only. So that means that this deal right here was the valve assembly and this thing itself is the transducer. So it wants you to replace it with one that's compatible with with uh, resume only, otherwise it's not going to work. Theoretically, I'm sure you probably could replace it with a non-resume unit, but uh, your resume wouldn't work and it might not even work on the car depending on what car it is. Um, but uh, this is unclear whether or not you have to get one that says RR on it. I've seen resume ones, like I said, with different labels on them there. So I honestly don't know if that RR means anything or matters when you're replacing it. But I always like to keep everything as close to original as possible. So I thought I'd mention it. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack this case open here with these two bolts. And notice there is a, it's a slider, it's a elongated hole on the other side of this. So this thing can turn like this. So it's uh, important that you make sure you know exactly where uh, these come off of. And it looks like here they're slightly off center from, from each other. So I'm going to take those off next. All right, the bolts are out. I have been warned that these things kind of spew everywhere when you open them up. So I'm going to do this as slow as I can with one hand. Okay, so that's what this side looks like. And I'll explain what all this does in a moment. This side is the electrical side. This is a complex... Um, deal here so I'm going to try my best to explain it but I don't know much about how electricity actually works so uh, I don't know how helpful I'm going to be but this is something that you, I suggest you watch the video um, on YouTube that I'll link uh, that explains this better but this is your cruise you know accelerate and decelerate tab right here I don't know how well the camera is going to pick up any of this stuff 
this circuit right here, there's a button inside this housing. You can take this off if you take your uh, pliers or screwdriver and bend up on these tabs. Pull it off. It's the same thing on the other side. You just got two tabs. Take that stuff off and there'll be a button and you can push the button in. And when that button gets pushed in, this guy right here will lift up and crush these two prongs into each other like that, which holds this little drum here in place so it, your cruise locks. That's what that does. Um, this coil spring around it, um, or clock spring, I guess some people want to call them, um, is going to be what controls how much your cruise varies. When you're going uphill, it'll slow down a little bit. When you're going downhill, it'll speed up a little bit. This clock spring stops that, so it won't allow it to just continually speed up forever or slow down forever when you're going uphill. It's going to allow the carburetor to give it extra gas by uh, taking away vacuum pressure from certain things. This here is a v uh, vacuum bleed valve. If you look close, you'll see a little hole there, right there. Yeah, you can see that. And that's what that's going to do is this thing slides. See this? This deal right here moves back and forth, and that's your resume. So when you're moving this thing, uh, for starters, you want to check the functionality of all these components, make sure they actually do what they're supposed to. This one's moving, so it's free. Um, that is going to allow you to. Uh, you know, when it's when it's free, it's bleeding vacuum pressure off, so it's, the cruise control is not activated. And when it's covered, it's building vacuum pressure, so your cruise control will begin to uh, activate. And that's how a resume works. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on that, if anybody knows about these, but that is my understanding of it. Apart from the electrical side, which you can test these using a multimeter, um, do a voltage uh, drop test on this here terminal with and these two terminals here and here with the terminals on the other side there which is why you don't want to take this off because if you take that off it'll kind of pull all this shit up and you don't really want to do that so keep that switch on there but that's the electrical component you can test that as well as vacuum tests everything on this is testable so keep that in mind this side here so this is where I think the fault is detected because these gears see there's gear in the back of that when these gears get seized up your uh, speedometer won't be accurate anymore because it's going to bind up and your cruise control isn't going to be accurate because this is going to bind up. So this is a magnetic plate that's held in there by a magnet um, and this little bolt here that holds down that clock spring so it doesn't uh, just continuously spin forever, kind of like a choke. Here's your drum, see that? Drum moves just like that. And you got this thing in the back and that's your speedometer. You can see that gear right there. See that moves when I move that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this apart and I'm going to clean it. I'll show you what it looks like when I take it apart first. Then I'm going to stop recording, I'm going to clean it, and I'm going to put it back together and test it. And then I'll uh, record all that and uh, get that squared away. But uh, that's what it looks like inside, just in case you were wondering what, what kind of a job this is going to be. Not all that complicated, it's a mechanical mechanism. And all these parts actually look like they're in fairly good shape, so I shouldn't have to buy a rebuild kit for these. Because I've read that they are quite difficult to get a hold of. But, uh, yeah, that's what it is. See that? It moves the clock spring. It moves that gear back there. Everything seems to be functioning correctly. So I will take this off, take this magnet, magneto, you know, magnetic plate off, and uh, record that, and then see you in the next one. All right, this is the source of the failure right here. Um, before I figure out how I'm going to...